Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about the spoilers for Draftbox 6. I really didn't think we'd be getting these spoilers so early. It's kind of funny actually, in Bandai's post, they even said like it's a pretty early reveal. I mean, obviously it's not all the cards, but it's a lot of them and it's a lot of the SRs, which is pretty interesting and pretty telling about the product overall. Because we'll look at these SRs and some of the rares and other stuff, and we'll see what the power level's at, and that's going to kind of dictate if this product's going to be another draft box 4, which we all know was a pretty big issue in the game, or if it's going to be more like a draft box 5, where in my opinion, uh, it wasn't perfect, but they did fix a lot of the issues with draft box 4. So we'll read these cards, guys. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss a video. If you want to help the channel out, there are lots of ways down in the description to do so. Gem me app and Patreon for your one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as your crosswalk competitive content. If you guys want to buy any sleeves, deck boxes, binders, definitely use deck protection down below. And finally, if you want to buy or pre-order anything you see in today's video, make sure to use my link in the description to TCG player. All that stuff helps out a lot, guys. That being said, let's get started. One of the cards that I'm actually most excited about, Corrin's Towers Secret Medicine. We have a one drop extra card, activate battle. If the other card's red, choose one of your cards and it gets plus 5,000 power for the turn. If it's your opponent's turn, choose it to one of your opponent's cards, ignoring barrier, and it gets minus 5,000 power for the battle. Okay, people are comparing this a lot to Sensu Bean, and there is definitely a comparison there to be made, but this is definitely not a Sensu Bean in that sense. Like, I saw some posts saying, you know, people wish that the game had more color identity because, you know, blue is getting a Topo, red's getting a Sensu Bean, and, and the Topo being in the form of, like, Gohan Baby's Minion. But, you know, they're similar in the fact that you get a, a 5k buff for the turn, but everything else about the card is pretty different. And it, it actually does speak to red's color identity in this way. So, it doesn't untap energy, unlike Sensu Bean, obviously. Uh, but what it also does is if it's your opponent's turn, minus 5k, something ignoring barrier. That is something very, very true to red, which is pretty cool to see in my opinion. It does give the card color identity. And we, we see that being a lot of times is a pretty necessary card. Like, you know, against like 15k rush, like weenie spam decks. We've seen, you know, black adopt protector of the people, even though protector is kind of like a generic card. But now that red has its own, you know, plus 5k buff for the turn, you don't necessarily have to play protector of the people, which is a pretty expensive card to begin with. And also, you know, is costly on the hand by discarding an additional card. So I do like that this card is being printed a lot. I think it's, you know, pretty balanced. Uh, you know, the plus 5k for the turn is definitely not something that's insane. The minus five on something with barrier makes it pretty good removal for like a kid Goku, adventure begins, other random stuff like that. I like, I like this card a lot. It looks really good, but also not too overwhelming, which is a big thing I like. Bardock, Great Ape Assault. We have a five drop 20k double strike blocker. EX Evolved for two blue over a blue Bardock with energy cost of two or more. And then permanent when using this card's evolve skill from your hand. Uh, you can choose battle cards in your energy and play this card in active mode. So very similar to the Zamasu and the Goku Black that we saw in set 10 where you can evolve over your energy. Now, this is actually a Bardock's crew and it's blue. So it's actually meant to support the older Bardock's crew stuff. I'm still waiting for the blue yellow Bardock crew leader, uh, the Bardock crew surge leader Bandai, just so you guys know. But, uh, you know, we have the other Bardock's crew stuff that's yellow and doesn't really synergize with the older leader. But regardless, this is cool. Uh, the Bardock that we know of right now is the five drop Bardock from Clash of Fates. That you can have it in your energy and then EX evolve into this, which is pretty nice. Uh, I don't know if there are currently any other blue Bardocks in the game that you can evolve this on top of, but I'm, I'm positive they will print some in the draft box and probably the common, uncommon, rare slots. We'll just have to wait and see. So, auto, if your card's a blue sand, when a card in your energy evolves into this card, draw one. Then at the end of the turn, switch this card to active mode and place the top card of your deck in your uh, energy and rest mode. So that's going to be the auto you get when you play it. So ramping you up is obviously pretty good. Getting this card to restand for the blocker is nice because you can swing at the double strike, possibly at a unison, maybe at life to pressure, stuff like that. But that's, it seems like it's a one-time use auto. So, you know, besides that, you'll have a pretty beefy 20k double striker. Not really unlike Raiders Warcry for blue. You know, obviously this requires a blue sand leader. Uh, it doesn't necessarily say you have to play it in um, Bardock's crew, which is cool. Uh, so maybe there's other experimentation there that can be done when we see some of the other more generic blue stuff in the set. King Piccolo, the new ruler, three drop 15K double strike permanent. If your leader card's red, this card gets plus 5,000 power and your opponent can't activate blocker skills in response to this card's attack. Uh, activate main if you have a red unison card and play with three or more markers, play this card from your hand and you can't play copy of this card for the turn. At the end of your turn, send this card to the owner's warp. So kind of like an overrealm for black, but it's actually pretty cool because it doesn't take up your overrealm slot. This card to me just screams red Broly. You play the Kale Unison, bump it up to, you know, three, four markers, play this 20K double strike. 
your opponent in the mirror match for example they can't use their bob blocker if you're playing against dark broly they can't use their dark broly blocker that's pretty strong just a free double strike aggressor definitely seems like it's gonna be quite good in red broly uh and then the fact that it goes away at the end of the turn definitely seems pretty balanced you know 20k double striker is not sticking around for forever so i do think that's pretty good there intersecting fates another rare from the set activate main if later cards blue look at the top two cards of your deck add one of them to your hand then place the remaining cards at the bottom of the deck in any order at the end of the turn switch one of your mono blue energy to active mode very interesting here so this card suffers the problem that many other cards like it suffer from and that is being an extra card now it is nice this card does untap an energy at the end of the turn but it basically means you're doing nothing with that energy in order to you know filter through your deck a little bit and get the energy back down the, the turn now obuni does a similar thing but when you play obuni you actually get multiple beaters out of it which is pretty good you know this card being an extra card i do think it's going to be a little bit rough playing a lot of copies because you know at the end of the day if you can't out combo the kill shot you're gonna lose so i don't know maybe this could be good in like uh blue baby for instance maybe it could be decent in invoker although i i don't think invoker will really play this just because they want to play more of the multicolor extra cards but who knows this definitely could be a good card in some deck possibly blue baby if i had to guess right now ss3 sun goku fist of fortitude five drop 30k triple strike barrier activate main if you card's green and you choose one card in your hand and discard it choose one of your opponent's battle cards ignoring barrier and ko it then choose one of your opponent's unison cards and remove two markers from it activate main pay a green if you later card's green and you discard this card from your hand choose one of your opponent's using cards and remove a marker from it okay interesting i want to point out that in the designer notes they did mention that this, this can be played with intensive training sun goku so that's a pretty cool thing there to realize uh this card again this actually seems a little bit weaker only because uh you know it costs you a card to kill something ignoring barrier as we're like the vegeta resolute age of destruction unison comes down pitches a card wipes the whole board ignoring barrier but i guess there is the benefit this is an activate main that you can use each turn which is kind of cool it also doesn't seem to be a once per turn so if your opponent has a lot of problem battle cards that's pretty good to get rid of them there and then you know i guess two cards in your hand can remove four markers from a unison definitely not bad and the activate main just extra utility that you know probably is, isn't going to come up all the time but definitely can be pretty solid in the right scenario hurdegarn phantasmic evolution we have a six drop 25k critical ex evolve uh, over a hurdegarn with energy cost of four which i don't believe any of the blue hurdegarns are energy cost of four correct me if i'm wrong though auto when this card's removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill or ko'd play one hurdegarn card with energy cost of four or nine from your deck or hand shuffle your deck if you look through it and you can't play copies of this card for the turn if you didn't play a battle card choose two cards in your opponent's hand and discard them so this actually brings up a very very interesting ruling thing because when you ko it it doesn't say you may play a hurdegarn it says play a hurdegarn so let's say you run out of valid targets in your deck or hand to play do you have to show your opponent your entire deck in your entire hand to verify that it seems like that would possibly be the case um i'm not sure if that's how that will work but there has to be some condition where you know you can't play any hurdegarns and then you get the effect to make your opponent pitch two cards and then activate battle that you can ko it with its own skill choose two of your opponent's battle cards and ko them so this card seems very very strong it seems like they want hurdegarn to be this blue green deck now which i think is totally fine the fact that you can play the nine drop hurdegarn from the deck is very 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 good so with that being the case uh, i think this card is looking to be pretty solid and i'm sure we'll get some type of four cost hurdegarn probably a green one coming out in the set but who knows maybe blue green's making a comeback you know turn one multicolor blue green into all your different hurdegarn plays that definitely seems like it can be quite strong so i'm actually pretty excited for that higher dragon a kind friend three drop 10k auto pay a yellow if you have two or more energy and it's your opponent's turn at the end of the battle and where this card is using the combo from your hand play up two skillless battle cards under the cost of one from your deck or drop area then shuffle your deck if you look through it and you can't activate the auto skills on copies of this card for the turn pretty good uh this thing says to me that when you combo with it you know on your leader's awaken side in kid Go in kid gohan you draw one because it's a monster you pay one and you get two skillless from drop or deck which means you know you can use this late game since it gets skillless from the drop as well and those skillless can then be used to combo so it seems like on paper it seems nuts because it's a it's a one energy essentially 15k combo because 5k from him 5k from your other skillless also drawing a card so for one energy that's a lot of value so I, I do think this card's gonna be quite good in the deck i haven't been too crazy about the other higher dragons in the kid go on deck and specifically i'm talking about the i believe it's the two drop tp promo and the six drop they've been underperforming a little bit so maybe this card just being ridiculous for value 
maybe it'll be really good in that deck. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. Next up, we have Lord Slug, Super Namekian, 3 drop 20k, unique barrier, permanent bond 2. When this card's in rest mode, your opponent can't add cards from their deck to their hand using non-leader skills. We've seen effects like this before, I believe on the Black Boo, specifically the Black Boo 6 drop. Pretty neat there. Activate main, pay a yellow if your other card's yellow or a Slug's army card and you discard this card from your hand. Play up to one Slug's army card, then it costs of one from your deck, then shuffle your deck. So it seems like they want Slug to be played green-yellow, which is interesting. I mean, I'm sure we're getting more yellow Slug support in the draft box. Uh, this actually grabs Wings from the deck, which is your typical turn one play. So typically, you'll, you'll charge yellow turn one. You'll use the activate main on this guy, fetch Wings from the deck. Pretty cool there. I don't think you really want to charge multicolor in a deck like this because you probably want to use this thing as early as possible, aka turn one. Although I suppose you could charge multi on one on turn two, use the activate main of this. That'll get you your wings. And then you have an additional energy to play like your, your Lord Slug. I think it's young again, maybe, or whichever Lord Slug two drop is a searcher for the deck because that'll become a one drop for a green energy. So that actually might be able to work out. So this seems pretty cool there. Toa, Dark Demon Realm, Scientist. We have an uh, X cost unison, 20K permanent. This card can't attack if it has two or fewer markers on it. I like this direction with black unisons a lot. I think the, you know, X basically one drop unisons with 5k power, I think are pretty lacking because they're so easily killed. Now, if you're not going to give black a free unison counterplay, which is fine to a degree, I guess. I wish they would. But if you're not going to give them a free unison counterplay, you have to make their unisons a little bit beefier, in my opinion. So with that being the case, auto once per turn, when one of your opponent's battle cards is removed from their battle area by a skill or KO'd, add a marker to this card. And then she has her own activate main plus zero. Choose a card in your hand and discard it. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards. Learn the cost of three or less and send it to the owner's warp. So she has her own way to trigger her auto there to gain markers. And then activate main minus four. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards and gain control of it. Very, very similar to Makika Bora from set 10. What's really cool too is like the auto triggers when it's removed by any skill or KO. So like, for instance, if your opponent activates successor, uh, that will, I think that should trigger it. So that's kind of cool there as well. Next up, Dem uh, Demon God, Demigra, True Power Unleashed, 5 drop 30k, Overrealm 5 for 2, or Dark Overrealm 5 for 2. Uh, it seems a little redundant, but I guess if you're not playing a, a mono black deck, you can still Overrealm it out. But I'm sure most of the time you'll Dark Overrealm it in an actual Demigra deck. Auto when this card's played using Overrealm or Dark Overrealm, draw one, then choose one of your opponent's battle cards and send it to the owner's warp. Auto when this card attacks, your opponent chooses a card in their hand and sends it to their warp. Very, very solid there. This is very akin to the uh, uh, Dark Demon Control Demigra. I think that's the name. Uh, the four drop Dark Overrealm where you swing with it, you rip a card out of their hand every time you do swing with it. This has the same effect, but a little bit of a bonus too. And being a two drop, it's not overly expensive in an aggro deck like Demigra. So I think that's uh, that's pretty nice there. I can see like playing this out, Awakening, playing something else with Wormhole after refueling your drop area. That seems like it'll actually be quite good. Sun Goku, Unwavering, Conviction, 4 drop 20k, Energy Exhaust, Double Strike, Arrival, Red, Green, Activate Battle once per turn, place up to one card from your opponent's combo area in the owner's drop area, then choose one of your unison cards or battle cards and, 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 uh, other than this card, and it gains plus 5,000 power for the turn. So another Sensu Bean-ish card, but you can't use it on your leader, uh, but this Activate Battle knocks out combos, which we saw was quite good in a format like Bibbidi, so if there's ever another format where you know comboing a certain card is really op this card can definitely be solid although obviously you'll only really get that effect on defense because on offense your opponent won't have a combo area yet uh by the time you use the activate battle but the plus five for some aggression or defense is definitely going to be solid explosive demon wave a card i definitely don't think we needed to have printed in the game but let's read it real quick energy exhaust counter counter if leader card's red and you choose a red card in your hand and discard it negate the battle cards counter attack skill and switch one of your mono uh, one of your blue energy to active mode at the end of the turn so invoker is essentially getting a battering laser but it only stops battle card counter skills so that's going to be things like topo that's going to be things like a uh, baby uh, gohan baby's minion possibly the occasional roshi negate in the mirror match or whatever but the card's okay i'm really glad it doesn't stop any uh counter attack skill so if it's not the extra card counter attacks, that'd be a little bit stupid with something like Victory Strike on the field from like a previous turn. But the activate main has the same activate main as the other invoker cards. Look at the top card of your deck, add a multicolor extra card to your hand. So clearly made for invoker. It's okay. It's not broken or anything. It's anno annoying because I don't think that deck needed support. But regardless, definitely not bad. Lord Slug, Giant Force. We have a unison, critical 15k plus one, activate main, choose a card in your hand and discard it. 
if you do choose one of your opponent's battle cards ignoring barrier and it gets minus 10,000 power for the turn so plus one for potential removal or just you know reducing a battle card not bad minus four auto if your leader card's red when your opponent activates a counter skill deal one damage to them notice it's not once per turn so when you minus four anytime your opponent negates they're taking a damage that's going to be particularly good against something like blue baby or you know freeze a prison just those super defensive decks where you just need to get through for damage this is actually going to be quite quite strong bergamo giant force we have an x uh one yellow unison 5k permanent this card gets plus 3000 power for each marker on it auto once per turn when your opponent attacks this card add a marker to this card plus or minus zero activate main add a marker to this card minus two activate main play up to one skillless battle card or u9 card then it costs a two or less from your deck in rest mode then shelf your deck so a few things i think are lost on this card i do like the fact that when it's attacked you gain markers that's pretty cool it can probably build up pretty quickly your opponent's probably going to be you know disincentivized from attacking this thing um adding a marker to it once per turn is cool the minus two playing a skillless playing a u9 the fact they come in rest mode kind of meh i mean u9 assemble plays a chapil for instance or, or a basil in active mode for two energy so that's kind of unfortunate there but uh it seems okay i don't know let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments below this is the one i'm most iffy about but regardless those are the cards we've seen so far they seem pretty cool uh my initial thoughts on this they're a pretty good power level in the sense that it doesn't seem like we'll have another draft box four or draft box five fiasco where something is ridiculously overpriced Not, nothing in this in this uh series of cards screams to me immediate staple um that you need like four of like obuni or like uh, exploding Venus vegeta or raiders war cry right they all just seem like good cards for their respective decks that shouldn't fetch like a ridiculous price but let me know in the comments below what you guys think thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time